Hi, right, so hopefully you've watched the first video where I've talked a bit about um, probably what your swim pond's like. So in this video, what I'm going to explain is the Michael Wheat system. Now, I'll be frank with you, it took me all of about five or ten seconds to come up with that name. But I gave it a good go and I really thought so hard about it. That's what I ended up with. So the way we build our swimming ponds is a bit different to how the market does them. How the marketplace has always done them traditionally. And my, like I've said in previous videos, to me, it's just about moving with technology, about using what's available to make it easier maintenance for people and also to get the projects working long term. You know, I kind of view what we do as a company like what someone like Rolls-Royce does. You know, they're building them vehicles to last for years. And, you know, 20-year-old Rolls-Royce still looks great. And that's what our swim ponds are like. And that's what I would like us to get. And of course, what's important with that is you get the engine right and you get this part right. So, the way that we do is we manage all the different areas that affect algae growth in the pond. So, we have the filter here. I'm going to talk about how that does the nitrogen cycle. We've also got the UVs. I'll talk about how they kill suspended algae. And we've also got some phosphate management. We do a bit in the filter and a bit in the pond. So I'll also discuss that. So let me just walk around and I'll basically show you what we've got here. So this is a product we use quite a lot. This is a Awaza filter. Awaza are the biggest pond company in the world. And the good thing about Awaza is you can get every single part of the filter. Everything's changeable. And because we are unique because to my knowledge we're the only company now that is directly with Awaza everyone else buys through another supplier we deal directly with them and the reason for that is because of how much of uh, how much of their equipment we actually install I think we're probably one of our biggest accounts in the whole UK and I love the product I'm a huge um, ambassador for them I, I it's German built it's built correctly it's easy to maintain easy to work with so I'm such a huge fan of what they do as a company. So how this works in, in a swimming pond setting is the water's pumped from the pond. So we have pumps inside the pond that are hidden. That water's pumped from there and then comes into this system, okay? So the pumps we use in the pond are 12 volts. They're safe. So if you were to damage the wire or anything while you're swimming in there or anything like that, you're absolutely safe. And the filtration is moved away from the pond. So it's a minimum two meters away, but, but sometimes it will be even further away. I think this on this project is about 10 or 15 meters away from the actual pond. So in here we have, and I'm going to show you, on the, on the outside first, there's a little computer screen. tells you how warm it is in the water. It's 24 degrees at the moment. Um, it tells me if I hold down menu in clean, it'll actually tell me how many cleans it's done in 24 hours which is super. So this has done 37 cleans in 24 hours, okay? So what, it, what it's got is it's got a drum in it. And what the drum does is it thins the water. So if you imagine like on a swimming pool, what they have is like sand filters. And what the sand does, is it kind of thins the water. This is kind of what the drum does as well. So it thins it down to 60 microns. So anything that comes in that's bigger than 60 microns does not pass the drum and does not go into the biological part of the filtration. So it's what we call the mechanical part of the filtration. What the mechanical part does is reduces maintenance. So this self-cleans, it cleans itself and doesn't really require much maintenance at all. So let's just have a look at the drum. So if I just take the screen off. Okay, so you can hear the water sloshing about now in the filter system. So we have here the Awaza drum. So what happens is when this does a clean, this moves, okay, it spins round and it sprays, and that dirty water then runs out the dirty water pipe. Uses about between one and three litres of water every time it does a clean. So that clean water flows through the filter, and you can see the really clean water in here. And then it goes into this part, and this is the biological part. So earlier on when I was talking about the gravel beds, and I was talking about what they do, is they get built up a silt. Well, we don't get silt in the filter because you've got the drum before it. And what you've also got is a lot of movement in here, oxygen here, pushing around the media. And this is where the bacteria lives. This is what does the nitrogen cycle. It turns ammonia to nitrite to nitrate. Now, you might think in a swim pond, oh, we're not going to have too much nitrate in there because or ammonia because we don't have fish in there and we don't have koi in there however you do have ammonia on your skin so it comes out and also if you've got wildlife in there what happens is the wildlife produce ammonia 
and and you know and also comes from lots of other sources and what this does is it just takes the ammonia to nitrite to nitrate okay so by doing that we can keep the nitrate levels really low so the algae hasn't got food to grow on okay so that shuts off one main source of food for them the second source of food is phosphate so phosphate is in tap water okay this varying levels around the country we get we've had readings of up to 10 um, what we do is we do a pre-filter, we draw it from the tap, we draw the water through it and we actually reduce that by 80%, whatever comes from the tap. We test it all before we do that. Once we get it down to a lower level, it's introduced into the pond and then over time that level keeps to come, coming down. A, through the plants that we put in there. We don't always need to put plants in, but we do generally. But also we have things like, I was to do a product called Sedox Speed, so we have Sedox Speed in the filter. What that does is it draws in the phosphates. We also use some equipment called phosphat in the pond, which again does the same thing. It draws it through using a pump, and that also brings down phosphate. So what, we, what we're able to do is get the phosphate level to a level of 0.035. If you get it to that level, basically, blanket weed just can't grow. So to me, it's about sorting the cause, not the problem. So what a lot of people do is they use a lot of blanket weed killers and what it does is just, it just stresses it short term. The blanket weed dies, comes back as phosphate. So that's not how we do it. We're treating the cores and we're gradually bringing the phosphates down so it can't even grow. We've done this successfully on hundreds of ponds now, bringing that phosphate level down and over time, the client will not have blanket weed in the pond. And I'm gonna show you the pond of where I'm at, which was installed about 18 months ago and you'll be able to see how little blanket weed is in there, but amazingly, how little plants are needed to support the actual swimming pond. Okay, and the other thing that's also really important to mention is the UV clarifiers, okay? So for me, the UV clarifiers are absolutely essential on swimming ponds. So the reason that they are, is what they do for the pond is a couple of different things. One is they kill suspended algae, okay? So that, mean, that stops the water from going green, which is just like super important. The second thing that they do is they also kill bad bacteria. Now, I recently seen a, uh, another company that in, installs swim ponds that doesn't fit UVs. So the reason we don't fit UVs is they kill bad bacteria and they, they kill good bacteria. Absolutely they do. Yes, they kill anything that comes into contact with them. So they almost function like a steriliser, okay? And they are now being used quite a lot in swimming pools. However, what they're saying is only partially true because yes, it does do that, but the good bacteria lives in the filter after them. So actually, all the good bacteria we need for our swimming pond to function is here. So because of that, it doesn't matter what the UVs do because the bacteria is actually living on these. So I'm sorry I'm a bit of a geek about it. So I'm a geek on pond chemistry, pond water. I, I just get so excited talking about it because I just know how great our product is and what we're doing so exciting. And, and we're able to, you know, what we're able to do now is retrofit what we're doing on these older swimming ponds. And we've done quite a few this year, which I'll talk a bit more about in my next video. So the UV clarifiers, not only do they kill suspended algae, but they also do a job killing bad bacteria. That's how we make it safe to swim in, okay? So any bad bacteria that gets in that pond, the UVs remove it by, by running constantly. So that is how the plant room works. That's how, and this can be fitted in a shed. It can be fitted in, a, in housing, it can be out of the way, it can be out in the open. It's all weatherproof. You can build bushes around it like this so you can't even see it. They're just absolutely perfect to hide where you need them to hide. And that's partly how we do this part of the system. And I'm gonna take you how we do the next part in the pond. Okay, so what you're gonna notice here, which you probably never imagined was possible or never seen before, is a swimming pond done with that Michael Wheat system where we don't have large, big planting areas. Okay, so we've just got this small area of planting here. So like I was talking with the filtration, that's done through us managing the phosphate level, managing pH, managing the nitrogen cycle. And we do that through not just what goes on in that section with the filtration, the UVs, but also what actually what we do here in the pond. So what we do here in the pond is we take the water 
from down at the bottom and that is then pushed out to the filtration system. So you'll see here we do have some plants so they help get the nitrate down. The more plants we have the more that will actually help with the blanket weed removal. Uh, when you get a close-up of that you'll see almost no, no blanket weed. We've not got the phosphate level on this quite down to 0.035 yet but we're really close and it will get there. So but you'll see absolutely minimal maintenance wise. Um, one of the further videos you'll see um, Jackie talk about like the, the maintenance she does on this and you'll see that it's actually very low and she doesn't really get any blanket weed that she needs to pull out which is fantastic. So you can see even without you know we're talking about most swimming ponds have 70% plant coverage. You can see this, there's no chlorine in here, there's none of that. You can see this is barely 2% of the pond is actually plants, which to me is just incredibly awesome and just shows exactly what we do. So that's it, the pump's drawn into there. Now what we do now, a lot, a lot of the time, we'll put jetties on, hide the pumps underneath. So you can't get to the pumps or anything when you're in there, but they're just doing a job. And of course, like I said before, we use 12 volt pumps. A, they're actually low on energy costs, and B, they are safe to use in swimming ponds. So yeah, that's basically what we're doing in the pond, as well as the air pump. Let me show you that. Okay, so what we've got here is the next part of what we do in, our, in the Michael Wheat system, again, it took me ages to think up of that name. And this is where we've got our oxygen in the pond. So what it helps is it dissolves, puts dissolved oxygen in the water to keep the oxygen level high. And algae doesn't like that and it, kind of, and it breaks it down. But also it gives us more movement in the water. So we have lots of different ways of achieving that goal. But oxygen is just really important to what we do. And again, that's just part of the system of us creating perfect swimming ponds that don't just last five years or 10 years, but actually will do 20 years, 30 years, 40 years. It's a big investment for you and we like to get it right from word go.